Hello everybody and welcome back to another video and if you're new you're really really welcome. I'm Jane and my husband Mike is behind the camera. We're British, early retirees, debt and mortgage free and living a thrifty, frugal and money saving life on a super tight budget here in Brittany in northwest France. And every Wednesday we open our home and invite you in for a midweek money chat. And this week is all about how we broke that cycle of living paycheck to paycheck. So I'm going to tell you a little backstory. Michael and I got together in 1996 and straight away we bought a house and we started doing it up. So pretty much from day one, we started borrowing money to do that. We felt at the time it was the only way that we could do it. We had career progression in mind and both of us were getting better in our own careers. I went to university as a mid-year student, I qualified as a teacher and life went on that way. And I think it was very normal for people to think I've got a better job, I'm earning more money, I'm gonna get a better house. And that's what we did. We moved to a better postcode. And to afford that better postcode, we bought another fixer upper and we carried on borrowing money to do that one up as well. And I think I can beat myself up about over all the things that we did in the past that kept us living paycheck to paycheck. We were impatient, we wanted things there and then, we expected everything to get better all the time, we expected we're working, we need a better car, we need to live in a better house, we need to have better clothes. And like I said, I could beat myself up over all of that, but I'm gonna to talk to you today about how we really changed and how we stayed on the path that kept us away from living like that in the future, how we stayed away from living paycheck to paycheck. Let's get going. all the usual things to put out there first before I start telling you about us. There's the systems that we put in place. Of course, the systems are vital. They are really important. We started budgeting on a zero balance budget, which means at the beginning of the month, we gave every pound or now euro a job. So we knew at the beginning of the month where every penny or cent was going to go. We set up long-term savings and because of that, we always had more than one bank account. So we had a bank account for sinking funds, a bank account for long-term savings, and we kept going that way. We always paid into our pension funds. British pensions are different from pensions in somewhere like America, for example. We pay, we have money taken from our wages each month. It's not taxed. It would have been very easy at any stage to say, oh, I'll keep that money each month I'll keep the money, but we never did. So we kept going with that. We took discretionary spending as cash. So the only money that we could fritter, do what we like with, spend in any way we wanted, we always took that as cash. And we obviously put in long-term savings, which when we were working were around 20 to 25% of our income. And even now we are semi-retired because we make money from YouTube are still 10% of our income. So it's important to let you know that we put those systems in place. Now, all of those require a change of mindset. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about breaking free from the I deserve it way of thinking. And a lot of that, I think the word has changed into that now, is really about entitlement, isn't it? That we all think, and I thought, and many people do think, that if you work hard, that you should reap the rewards through consumerism, in your house, in what's in your house, in the clothes that you wear, where you shop, the supermarket you go to, what you eat, the type of food that you eat, all of those things. And breaking free from that, breaking free from that emotional state of thinking, I deserve it, or even worse, I'm entitled to it, really, really took us away from that paycheck to paycheck living. It gave us a huge amount of freedom 
the day we stopped shopping in certain supermarkets and went to the discount supermarkets like Lidl and Aldi changed us and it changed us forever and we've never looked back. When we stopped the thinking that I must have these posh clothes or nice clothes or good quality makeup for my job because of appearances and realised I could look really smart and stylish and buy my clothes from a supermarket or a charity shop or I could buy my makeup from Aldi or I could get my perfume from Lidl and I still do, that I could furnish my house beautifully from marketplace or free cycle or secondhand shops or charity shops. When I broke free from that mainstream thing that you've got to live the dream, that you've got to build memories, that you've got to have curb appeal, that your house has got to have a wow factor, when I stepped away from all of that, not only did I just feel this immense sense of liberation, but it was a huge part of breaking that cycle of living paycheck to paycheck because I didn't need all of those things that had kept me in that position previously. thing that we really changed that really broke that paycheck to paycheck cycle was that we started having much much longer term goals and I want to give you an example of where we live now I mean we bought this house and it was semi derelict the land was absolutely derelict we'd always taken on fixer uppers in the past and we were not afraid to take on one more but even though the house is comfortable and the land is manageable, it is far from finished. So what we have now is much longer term goals. Knowing that we have to take the long game with absolutely anything and everything. And that means having financial goals that are much, much longer. So we're always thinking of the next five years when we save up and pay for the next car. We think of the next three to five years of a project that we need to do to keep working on this property and in the land in particular. And we very much changed into those people who instead of thinking like, oh, I want to pay for something for this year or just something I want to do for this year, that we've become the type of people who are patient enough to save for something that can take five to 10 years. And that feels like a long time. But as you get older, you, you do reflect on the fact that it's not very long and it goes quicker than you think. And also saving money just for the sake of saving money can sometimes feel a bit pointless. Like, what are you doing with this money that you're saving? But putting in place those goals, those tangible real goals has really, really changed us it means we're happy to just park money in a bank account and leave it there and keep adding to it and letting it grow over time because our goals are going to take time. The next part of the change in us, I suppose has come from age, experience, wisdom, and sometimes bitter experience, that there is absolutely no such thing as an unexpected expense. There are only unplanned expenses. The classic thing I always say is if you have teeth, you are going to need to pay for the dentist. If you have eyes, you are going to have to pay for an eye checkup. You're gonna to have to pay for glasses, unless you're lucky, and I hope you are. If you have hair, it's going to grow. If you have children, they are going to grow. They're going to need shoes and school uniform. If you have a house, it's going to need maintenance. If you have pets, they're gonna need haircuts. They're going to need the vet. If you have a car, it's gonna need tires. It's going to need maintenance. Everything has to be paid for at some stage. Even death isn't unexpected. The when is unexpected but it's going to happen. 
We're going to have to pay to dispose of our own corpses one day. We're going to have to pay for all aspects of our lives, all of the time, until the day we die. There isn't any such thing as an unexpected expense. Birthdays and Christmas are going to come around each year. Every single year, there will be parents worrying about the cost of something or other. And it's just not unexpected. It's going to happen. School trips are going to happen. School expenses are going to happen. Everything is going to happen all of the time. And when we certainly learn that, and I can tell you through bitter experience, there have been many times in the past when it's been a dunk moment of, I should have put money aside for that, and I didn't, and I will do in the future. And we're still growing like that as people. We still, we still get caught out by our own lack of planning, but far more occasionally now. So when we put in place sinking funds, and if you're here for the very first time and that phrase is unusual to you, it's like having little savings pots for all of those things. So for example, our dogs have a saving pots for their vet care should they need it. Our car has a savings pot for tires and a service. Those are examples. When we really grasp that, that there's no such thing as an unexpected expense, that we have to plan for each and every one of them. That, that I think was the biggest thing that stopped us living paycheck to paycheck and thinking like proper, proper grown ups. next one I think it's all about maturity isn't it I think it's about us sort of being sensible with ourselves and realizing that we are not royalty and we do not need butlers and we do not need people to wait upon us and we do not need people serving us and this is the one that really really saves us a massive money and means that we, we don't we can live beneath our means not to our means is that we don't need convenience we don't need it now we don't need people looking after us. We don't need it. Let's give you some examples. In the past, to save myself time, I used to have my supermarket shopping delivered. Do it online, get it delivered. Okay, you think to yourself, that, that couldn't save you money. But actually, I was driving home past the supermarket every single day. It was on my way. So realizing I didn't need to pay for that convenience. For example, I could wait for something to come up for sale second hand. I can wait for someone to sell it, that they've had it, they've enjoyed it, and then I can have it. An example would be maybe a new bag, for example. Say if I wanted a new bag for work, I could just wait for something to come up on eBay. I could wait for something to come up second hand in a charity shop. It takes patience and sometimes more patience than I've got patience for. An example recently is that we waited two years of looking for something second. We were looking for a car trailer. We could have at any stage nipped off to a shop, spent almost 2,000 euros on a new one. We didn't want to spend that much money. It wasn't going to be an investment that we would get any return on spending that much money. Uh, we kept looking for the one second hand and they were too far away. They were, you know, they were three, four hours away. We just kept waiting and waiting and waiting and we did. One came up within half an hour's drive at the right price. It just took patience. It was inconvenient, I can tell you. It's like if you were out and about and if we are out and about and we've gone to the supermarket or we've gone out or we've done those things, we're what, an hour and a half from home? If we want a coffee, we've got coffee at home. It's like if we're out and about and we're a bit hot and I think to myself, well, we can get an ice cream. No, but if we're really desperate for an ice cream, I can call in the supermarket on the way home, pick up a box of Magnums, four Magnums in a box, for less than the price of one if we were out and about. I could buy a coffee when I'm out, or well, for the price of one coffee, I could make 10 at home. 
So for the sake of thinking, well, I'm a bit parched, but I'm on the way home. I'm nearly home anyway. I've saved myself that money. So one thing that we've learned is that we're not royalty. We're not, we don't need butlers. We don't need people looking after us. We don't need people making us food. We don't need people making us coffee and that we can be patient and that we can wait. And yep, inconvenience at time, I'll grant you. But it's one of the things that keeps us living well below our means and far away from living paycheck to paycheck. talking about maturity haven't we and experience and all those things that you sort of layer throughout your life and it gives you far more perspective and I think the one I'm going to finish with the biggest thing that has really stopped us living paycheck to paycheck is an attitude of gratitude and, and I pinch myself I really pinch myself of how how well I live and this is how I feel really really rich I feel incredibly rich every time I walk in my bathroom and there is a toilet that I can flush. Pure drinking water in that toilet and I can flush it. I can turn on a tap and hot water comes out of it. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, hot water comes out of that. There is a shower. I can have a shower whenever I want. I've got a washing machine. I can have clean clothes whenever I want. You know, it, even, even in all the 27 years that we've been together, at any stage, I could walk into my kitchen, open my fridge, open my freezer, open my pantry cupboard, and there's always food. There's always food. I can always turn the electricity on, always. There's logs in my shed, and I can light my fire in the winter and stay warm. And I, I just think to myself, you know, we, we know, we know all of us who have all of those things, that there are people over every inch of this planet who can only dream of it, only dream of it. And so having that maturity and that attitude of gratitude of realising that I'm not entitled to anything, I don't deserve any more or less than anybody else at all it doesn't matter how hard it doesn't matter I don't need people waiting on me or cooking for me or delivering things to me or looking after me that I've really been able to realize with perspective and maturity and all of those things that it is absolutely possible from my perspective and in my experience to live beneath my means and just break that cycle I mean we've broken it for enough years now for it to feel normal but I never forget for many many years we certainly like so many people lived paycheck to paycheck and now I can understand the freedom that I feel personally that I don't live like that anymore <music> Thanks again for coming into the living room for a little chat with us today. It was nice to have you here and thank you so much for watching our videos. Thank you to everyone who supports the channel by hitting the like button. Thank you so very much. Thank you to everybody who leaves a comment. Tell me, have you broken free from the paycheck to paycheck cycle? How did you do it? What perspective do you now have? Thanks everyone. We'll see you again. Bye.